Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 23, and in this video we'll be turning off rooftops when we enter buildings. So let's start by making a 3D cube. And I will simply make this cube as big as the floor. So I'll turn off the roof so I can see what I'm doing here. And then let's make this roughly the size of the floor inside. Okay. Oh, let's make it a bit longer. All right. And now our box collider comes with a checkbox called is trigger. We'll check that checkbox. And then if we add a ply blocks component, we can make a trigger with info on trigger enter. So when our player steps into this area, this event will be triggered, and it comes with a temporary variable called trigger object. So here we can do a on trigger enter if a equals b, and we want to check if that temporary trigger object was us. So let's do a if get temp game object trigger object equals let's do a character player see if that works for us so if the player entered this area let's do a debug let's also do a trigger with info exit and I'll copy this whole block and the debug will say exited. Now when you check the is trigger checkbox, that means you can walk through it. So even though it's a big big block here, we'll be able to walk through it. Unfortunately, it doesn't look very good. That kind of ruins the entire interior of this building. So let's make a new material. I'll call this no draw. We can make it green or yellow or something. Let's see how that looks. That looks all right. So this is our trigger area. And I don't want my camera to be able to see that. If I go to my game view, we can see it. However, we can, on our camera, use what's called a culling, culling mask. So we just need to set a no draw layer, then our camera won't be able to see it. So let's make a new layer. I'll call this no draw. We'll set our new cube to the no draw layer. And then on our camera, let's simply cull the no draw layer. Perfect. So now in our scene view, we'll know it's there and we can edit it by left clicking on it, but our camera can't see it in game. Triggers need a rigid body. So let's go to our player. We can add it to either. We could add it to our player or to this cube. I'll actually just add it to this cube. So let's add a rigid body and we'll set it to not use gravity or it'll fall through the floor as soon as I hit play and we'll set it to is kinematic so it doesn't go anywhere. Now let's check the ply blocks on trigger enter event for what it says. It says calls when another collider enters this trigger. Note, one of them must have a rigid body. But actually, our player doesn't even have a tri um our player doesn't even have a collider. So if I drag my player into the scene, we'll see that he just has a nav mesh agent to allow him to move. 
So now let's go ahead and add a physics capsule collider. And this will be for triggering the floor when we go inside. All right, I will save. And now let's take another look at the block before we hit play. As soon as we hit the play button, this on trigger enter will happen for everything in this building. Unfortunately, when it checks to see if the trigger object was the player, we won't have spawned yet. So here we'll have to do a flow if character player is ready. And we'll drop those in here. So this will work. You could also check if the trigger object's tag was maybe a player tag, or you could check if the trigger object's layer was set to layer 18, which is what the one our player is on. But for now, if the player is ready, if trigger object equals player, that works just fine. I'll do the same thing over here in the on trigger exit. We'll do a if character player is ready. So now when I hit play, we should get a debug. Player entered, player exited. Let's try it out. Perfect. So now we're ready to turn off the roof. We could save the roof game object in the ply blocks as a local game object, or we could just drag it into our ply blocks since it's not a prefab and it's in the same scene. We can go ahead and save it as a local game object, just because. So here I'll make a roof. And I'll drag that in as a reference. So now, instead of debugging on trigger enter, let's just do a object, enable disable, and let's disable our get local game object or local variable. So here, roof. And then on trigger exit, let's enable the roof. Let's see how that looks. So that looks good. But now we have a problem. What if our house isn't a square shape? This is where it gets a little complicated, but I've found out a very easy way to deal with it. So I'll grab my roofs here. And this house has three separate rooms. I'll copy and paste. Let's name this Blacksmith Roof Trigger. I'll copy it and move it over here. House 2 roof trigger. Now, we have a problem. If I make it about this size, the roof's going to turn off before I even enter the building. So what I figured I would do is simply make two of them. I'll put one over here. And let's move this one over here. So now we might be faced with another problem. When we on trigger enter into this first block, the roof will disappear. But then when I enter one of these rooms, I will exit this block, turning the roof back on, enter this block, turning the roof back off again, which means when I walk through these doors, the ceiling will flicker off and then back on. However, there is a way to fix it. Let's start by putting these two into a parent. 
So I will right click and create empty. And I'll put them inside. I'll name it area one and area two. And the cool thing about rigid bodies and trigger areas is if the uppermost parent has a rigid body, once again, let's turn off use gravity so this whole triggers, so these triggers don't fall through the floor. Now that our parent has a rigid body, all child on trigger enters will go to the apply blocks of the parent. So let's add a apply blocks component. And as I said, if we have a trigger with info on trigger enter, that on trigger enter event will, will trigger for all child game objects. So here we can remove the rigid bodies from the children. And we don't need ply blocks on the children either. However, I'll copy and paste it onto the parent. So all the children need is a box collider with the is trigger checkbox checked. The parent has the rigid body and the ply blocks. I'll set up the local game object roof variable. And here in the parent, let's do on trigger enter. If player is ready, let's disable roof. Unfortunately, here's where I was talking about when we walk through the doorway, the roof will flicker off and then back on. So let's also make a integer called count. And when we enter, we'll set the count to count plus one. And then when we leave, We'll set the count to count minus one. On exiting, if the count is zero, that must mean we're out of the entire house and we can turn the roof back on. Let's build those ply blocks now. So on enter, if it was us that entered the building, let's set count to integer a plus b, that's from math, integer a plus b, and we'll do count plus one. A common integer of one. Now we can check if count equals one, we'll turn off the roof. A equals B. If count equals one, turn off the roof. There we go. If it was the player, add a count. And if the count is one, turn off the roof. I'll copy this whole ply blocks to the on trigger exit. And here, this time we're going to set count to count minus one. So let's do a math a minus b. Count minus one. And if count equals zero, let's turn on the roof. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Let's hit play and see how it looks. And then in the inspector, we'll watch count to see if it gets added and subtracted properly. Count is one. If I stand right in the middle, count is two because I'm in inside of two trigger areas right now. If I step into this room, count is back down to one. And when we leave, it should go to zero, and the roof should come back on. 
perfect. Thank you so much for watching, and if you learned something, hit that like button. Join me next time, and we'll be taking our first look at animation events.